President Biden fundraising off of former President Trump's big victory in Iowa, saying, quote, it looks like Donald Trump just won Iowa. He's the clear front runner on the other side at this point. But here's the thing. This election was always going to be you and me versus extreme MAGA Republicans. It was true yesterday, and it'll be true tomorrow. Patrice Onwuka is the director of the Center for Economic Opportunity at the Independent Women's Forum, and she joins me now. Patrice, before we get into the fundraising numbers, Biden and his team have expressed a lot of confidence, if not cockiness, that they are going to whoop Donald J. Trump in a general election. Do last night's results show that that's completely misplaced confidence, if not cockiness? Uh, good morning. Good to see you. And I do think it does. Um, certainly, President Trump has handily won Iowa. Uh, and the, um, the enthusiasm for supporting him among Republican voters, at least in Iowa, signifies that, you know, more, uh, more Republicans would absolutely vote for him, even if he's not their top choice, than, than would vote for, let's say, Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis if they were at the top of the ticket um, and, they were, and they were not their top choice. So um, there is absolutely a lot of enthusiasm behind Behind President Trump, and and that, and and when you look at the real clear policy averages in a number of polls, including the Fox News poll, President Trump still edges out President Biden in a in a head-to-head -head matchup. So I don't see that changing. And absolutely, they're trying. The Biden campaign is trying to rev up uh, a lot of those anti-Trump voters, but there are going to be a lot of dissatisfied people, Democrats and, and independents, who may just sit out the election. That said, there's a lot of time between now and November, and money does matter. The Biden-Harris campaign announcing Monday, it has $117 million in cash on hand. That's the highest total amassed by any Democratic candidate in history at this point in the cycle. A spokesman for the Make America Great Super PAC calling on Republicans to come together, saying, quote, Joe Biden's team just announced a massive war chest. Every dollar spent by President Trump's primary losers is a dollar that could be fighting Joe Biden. Once the D.C. rhinos are finished crying in their cocktails over tonight's results, it's time for Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, and Vivek Ramaswamy to face reality and stop wasting time and resources. Obviously, after this came out, Vivek dropped out and endorsed Trump. But this is a notion that you heard Carly mention, Elise Stefanik, saying, we need to come together. We need to pool our resources, time and money, to defeat Biden and stop beating up each other. When, or if and when, do you you think that happens, Patrice? Well, I'm looking for mid-February. I think, you know, if President Trump does extremely well in New Hampshire, um, then, and, and let's say he gets to South Carolina and absolutely beats, let's say, Nikki Haley, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's done at this point. The Republican campaign uh, for, for nomination is done, and he would be the nominee. And so that does give him plenty of time to start to fundraise. And hopefully, um, hopefully all of the candidates who decide to suspend their campaigns to, to cease will then su show the support you know, the leading candidate. I think that's the key there. Uh, but conservatives, they have to think about the issues. And what was really interesting, what I saw last night, Todd, immigration edging out jobs in the economy is the number one motivating factor for vote Republican voters. That bodes well for conservatives who actually have a plan, who have actually passed legislation to deal with our border crisis. And it bodes very poorly for President Biden, who has not done anything but actually allowed the border to become what it is right now. Immigration topping economy by eight whole points in Iowa. To your point, that is groundbreaking, and it just shows how frustrated the American people are with Joe Biden and the border. I think Joe Biden thinks he has an ace up his sleeve, if you will, with all the investigations into President Trump. That said, if you look at the results and you just listen to the populace, it seems like that strategy is 100 percent backfiring on the Democrats. And Mark Thiessen got to that point last night in explaining these results. Listen. This was the first time that Trump supporters had a chance to stand, step up and do something to express their solidarity with Donald Trump, and that's what they did in Iowa. Um, so that it, it is a absolutely a historic victory for Donald Trump. But let's keep in mind, it's 100,000 people. I mean, you were saying earlier today the over-under is 150,000. We're going to be, you under. know, we're going to be under. Uh, they spent $124 million in ads, 100, another $100 million in the ground games. You're talking about $2.23 million per voter. That was spent in this state. Okay, so there's the caveat that, yes, this wasn't a huge sample size, but 
Trump won by 30 points. This was the first opportunity for the people to use their democratic process to vote and tell the party establishment on both sides, but mostly the Democrat, hey, you're going after Donald Trump, you're wasting time, you're wasting money, and we don't like it. Are Democrats really, following last night's result, regretting their decision to go after Donald Trump through the courts? I don't think so. You know, I absolutely think that this is part of a strategy for them. Um, and so it, it, we will see if a lot of even the tra the, the charges uh, end up becoming anything. We, we've seen certainly in Georgia, uh, this the, the um, romantic sideshow uh, that uh, Fannie <laughs> Willis has become. And so you'll start to see some of those things unravel. But, you know, the, the, the political question is different from the legal question. And President Trump has a team that's fighting uh, for uh, on his back. I do think it's interesting, though, that the fact that there seems to be so much fighting for so, that he's fighting so much positions him as kind of a champion. And when you look at the exit polling and some of the questions that were asked, um, voters overwhelmingly said they want a champion, someone who's going to be a fighter for them. And whether they, and it seems like um, President Trump was the one that they felt like is going to be a fighter for them, not just for himself. So it's going to be interesting. We've got a long way till, uh, till November. Anything can happen. In 2020, we saw an uh, unexpected uh, virus you know, hit our nation and, and, and the economy, everything changed overnight in, in one month. And so anything can happen over the next few months. But I'm here for, along for the ride. We are all along for the ride. Patrice, thank you very much. Great analysis and insight. We'll see you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.